After the humiliating defeat to humanity at the Battle of Sharon, the Romulan Star Empire would be thrown into chaos until one man would come along and unite the Empire with the goal of redemption in mind. And after a series of unexpected events, the Romulan Bird of Prey would be launched with a resounding thud. But what were the events that led up to this starship's invention? Well today, we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Beta Canon history, which led up to the designing of the Romulan Bird of Prey. This story, however, is a little bit different than my normal outings. There isn't a lot of information, canon-wise, on this period in Romulan history. And so, since so many of you love my flights of fancy imaginings within the Star Trek universe, I've taken this opportunity to write my head canon for this unknown period in Romulan history. Also, though this video is titled The Romulan Bird of Prey, it's really the lead up to how that vessel came to be, rather than about the vessel itself. Though rest assured, part 2 will be all about the amazing design and its own particular history. And like always, because this is my own little bit of fan fiction, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. The Earth-Romulan War of the late 2150s had been an embarrassing defeat for the Romulan Star Empire. In the hopes of destabilizing developing relationships between what would eventually become the founding members of the United Federation of Planets, Praetor Vargo's extensive tactical initiatives had had the complete opposite effect on these various species, ultimately bringing them together and eventually contributed to the Romulan Empire's surrender. Luckily for the Empire, the newly born United Federation of Planets and humanity itself did not have the resources or the inclination at the time to occupy Romulus. Instead, after intense negotiations, a buffer zone between the Federation and Romulan space would be created and dubbed the Neutral Zone, entry into which by either side would constitute an act of war. Because of the shameful surrender, Praetor Vargo would be arrested and executed, leaving a vacuum of power within the Romulan government. Eventually, a new Praetor, Vistok, would emerge victorious in the power struggle and begin rebuilding the Romulan Empire's confidence and prestige. Vistok, a brilliant tactician himself, was also a political genius. In order to gain the Romulan military support outright, he launched several minor campaigns against technologically inferior races just beyond their borders opposite of their Federation counterpart. Taking these worlds as slave labor colonies, Praetor Vistok would distribute the wealth acquired on those worlds to the military, taking none for himself. He would also grant the Romulan military permission to set up military training facilities on these worlds with Romulan generals overseeing the new slave population as planetary governors. History has lost the exact number of civilian deaths on these slave worlds, but Federation historians believe these numbers to be in the billions. Next, Vistok turned his attention to pleasing the Tal Shiar. Enacting several new policies designed to give the Romulan secret police far more authority to maneuver as they saw fit, the Tel Shiar would also fall into line behind the new Praetor. The stock would institute several public reforms as well, that would see the Romulan civilian population praise his name. With his power base secure, the stock then began to pour resources into rebuilding the Romulan fleet, and developing new technologies and starship designs which could set the galaxy ablaze. One major tactical disadvantage of the Empire was its lack of starships which were able to travel at warp while not harming its Romulan crews. Delta radiation exposure on board warp-capable Romulan starships was a constant problem. 
To solve this issue, specially designed warp sleds had been used to ferry Romulan starships equipped with advanced impulse drives to their destinations. An intolerable disadvantage for the Empire. Espionage had given the Romulan Star Empire detailed blueprints of Vulcan starship ring warp drive designs, but pride prevented the Romulan Senate from even acknowledging these designs. And Praetor Vistok was no exception to that rule. He felt that if the Romulan Empire was to recover from its own defeat by humanity, it needed to stand on its own, with its own technology, and so set the most brilliant minds in the Empire the task of creating their own version of a completely safe warp drive. Vistok would rule the Romulan Star Empire for the next 48 years, until 2318, when he was diagnosed with Tuvan Syndrome and stepped down as Praetor, dying one year later. The next four decades would see a plethora of Praetors come and go for the Empire, 19 in total, as seemingly no one could live up to the reputation of Vistok. In 2256, Vespasian, reigning Praetor at the time, was both horrified and pleased by the Battle of the Binary Stars. Vespasian had no love for either the Federation or the Klingon Empire, and hoped publicly that both would annihilate each other. But secretly, he and the Senate were quite worried. If the Klingon Empire succeeded in defeating the Federation, the Senate believed they would turn their sights on the Romulan Star Empire next. Thankfully though, the Federation won the war, and all was quiet along the neutral zone. It was during this time that Romulan scientists finally believed they had made a breakthrough in warp drive design. An engine system that would not only be safe for its passengers, but also far more powerful than the standard matter-antimatter warp core design. Vespasian ordered immediate testing of this new engine system, and after one year of shakedown cruises, the quantum singularity core had become a reality. As Praetor, Vespasian was not liked by either the Tel Shiar or the Romulan people. Concerned more with his image and personal pleasure, the Praetor would enact several policies that would make him quite unpopular. And although he was on shaky ground with these two groups, he did have the backing of the Romulan military, and so was still secure in his position. Setting the Empire's best engineers the task of creating a starship design to utilize the new Singularity Core, along with new plasma torpedo weapon systems, Vespasian hoped that within five years he would have a fleet that could conquer the galaxy, but events would conspire to prevent his ambitions from becoming reality. By 2261, the Tel Shiar would have enough of Vespasian and would set in motion a plan to see the Praetor dethroned and executed. Recent scouting missions had discovered a warp-capable star system rich in fine minerals. Feeding the Praetor false information about the star system, the Tel Shiar led Vespasian to believe the system was far weaker than they actually were. Wanting to keep his relationship with the Romulan military, and hoping that conquering this star system would sway public sentiment in his favor, Vespasian ordered an immediate attack on the star system. And it was an utter failure. Not only was the Romulan military unable to secure the star system, but the subsequent war with the Bayonites would see several Romulan colonies come under the enemy's control. Happy with Vespasian's failure, the Tel Shiar prepared to arrest and then try the disgraced Praetor, but Vespasian wasn't quite done yet. Having realized he had been betrayed by the Tel Shiar, Vespasian had sent loyal officers he could trust to make peace with the Bayonites. The Bayonites accepted the terms of peace, even though they had had the upper hand, a mistake they would later regret. With the war at an end, and knowing what was coming, Vespasian was able to pull one more rabbit out of his Romulan hat, producing a communication between the head of the Tel Shiar and the Bayonites, making it appear as though the loss was due to the Tel Shiar's betrayal. In recent years, study of the data chip that contained the transmission by the joint Federation Free Romulan Historical Society has confirmed the entire communication to be a complete hoax. 
Nevertheless, in 2262, Vespasian would use this falsified transmission to pin all the blame for the war's loss on the Tel Shiar, and use the entire situation to purge almost two-thirds of the organization with show trials for the public, followed by mass executions. Vespasian knew, however, that support from the Romulan military, Tel Shiar blamed or not, was beginning to wane, and realized he needed a swift victory in order to re-establish the damaged relationship. And so, for the first time in over a century, Vespasian would turn his eyes to an old enemy, the United Federation of Planets. And when we next return to this story, we'll take a direct look at the Romulan Bird of Prey, the events of 2266, and the mistakes that would lead to the downfall of Praetor Vespasian. Hope to see you all then. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the history of the Romulan Star Empire as I've laid it out here? Do you want me to create more historical videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel retain its power on YouTube by gaining the support of the Romulan military? then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Jolantru.